Our top story this hour is China taking back-to-back -back blows. The Trump administration confirming plans to hit China with a tariff of 25% on $200 billion worth of imports. That's more than double the original 10% proposal. It comes as Congress passes a defense bill that some lawmakers say is tougher on China than any other before, a reflection of the bipartisan effort to pressure Beijing into a deal. Yesterday, Press Secretary Sarah Sanders supporting the president, saying he's going to stay tough on China. Listen to this. We'd like to see the unfair trade practices stop. But until that happens, the president's going to hold their feet to the fire. He's going to continue to put pressure on China. Uh, and he's not going to sit back and allow American uh, industries and American workers to be taken advantage of. Joining me right now is Newt Gingrich. He is former Speaker of the House and Fox News contributor. Good to see you, Mr. Speaker. Thanks for joining us this morning. Your take on what's taking place this morning, it looks like we're headed perhaps for this trade war that everyone's talking about. I know the administration keeps calling it a trade dispute. Are things getting worrisome to you? Well, I don't, I don't think they're particularly worrisome for the United States. The Chinese, for a quarter century, back to 1991, have routinely cheated. Uh, even Obama's director of national intelligence said that the Chinese in one year stole $460 billion in intellectual property from American companies, more than our total sales to China. So what's happened is you have a new president, President Trump. Trump says he wants to reset the relationship so that we get fairness out of China. The Chinese who have been literally making out like bandits, ripping off the Americans, are shocked at the idea that we're serious. Uh, and now we're going through a process of how many steps do we have to take uh, to get their attention that this isn't just some casual project. This is a real effort to reshape the relationship uh, between the two economies. Yeah, I understand that. And I know that China has been the bad actor for a long time in terms of stealing intellectual property from the United States, forcing the transfer of technology to Chinese companies. And they're still doing it. They do it through academia, et cetera, even though they don't even admit that they're doing it. But how do we know that tariffs are the right potion here. How do we know that it's going to be tariffs that are actually going to get them to move? Is there any way to get China to stop stealing IP? I don't see an, an end to, the, to their practices, even though tariffs are going to cost them more money. Well, look, I think ultimately you may have to go way beyond tariffs. You may have to ban Chinese companies from the American market. Uh, you may have to set up a whole series of reciprocal rules where everything they do to us, we do to them. Uh, but, but the reality is you have two futures. You have a future where you allow the Chinese to keep ripping you off, and sooner or later they're going to become a dominant power because if somebody steals four or five hundred billion dollars a year of your inventions and your, and your intellectual property, sooner or later their, their capacity is going to overwhelm you. Uh, I think, secondly, we ought to be honest about the double game that's played, for example, by Google and others who will do things for the Chinese to help their security police that they won't do for the American military. There's a very strange double standard among some of our bigger companies uh, that they will tolerate behavior from the Chinese, uh, that they would go crazy if an American government did it, and yet apparently they want the business so badly, or they're so intimidated by the Chinese government that they don't think that they can protest. Well, what about this story this morning that Google is going to come up uh, with a censored version of its search engine uh, testing a mobile version of its search engine that would adhere to Chinese control over content. Somebody made the point earlier that Google will not renew its military AI contract in the U.S., and yet it's willing to go give it up to China uh, for a reduced, uh, a reduced search engine that basically placates what the Chinese government wants, and that is censorship. Look, there, there's something suicidal about an American company which has flourished because of American freedom and the American rule of law, deciding that it won't help protect America, but it will, in fact, help the Chinese government impose a dictatorship. And let's be clear here. Uh, there's another report that Google has agreed to build uh, very sophisticated uh, capabilities of artificial intelligence for tracking individuals, something which the Chinese government desperately wants to be able to do. I, I think we have to look at this whole thing, and, and let's be honest. Uh, the, the moves towards an open society which Deng Xiaoping created uh, and which had moved China towards dramatic prosperity and greater freedom have now been reversed by a reimposition of Leninist kind of centralism and a desire to control the whole country 
at a level of detail which resembles George Orwell's 1984. Yeah. And I think we have to really come to grips with the nature of the Chinese government. Yeah, but you're right. But you know what? Google and other companies that want a foothold there will say, there are 1.3 billion people in China, Newt. Okay, 7 billion people in the world. There's a huge percentage of them in China, and we got to have a foothold in that market. Sure, and my answer is really simple. The largest, most profitable market on the planet is the United States. That's right. Yep. If you prefer the Chinese to us, fine. That means we don't have to let you do business in the U.S. I mean, people like Google, the companies like Google have to confront reality. If they're not prepared to help America defend itself, yeah. there's going to come a morning when they have to do whatever the Chinese dictatorship tells them to do yeah. uh, or else. You That's a, a pretty point. frightening future. It sure frankly. is. That's a really good point. So let me get to immigration and this showdown happening. A U.S. appeals court yesterday striking down a major part of President Trump's crackdown on illegal immigration. The court ruling it unconstitutional for the administration to threaten cutting off funding for the sanctuary cities that are not cooperating with immigration officials. This ruling said Congress's final say in regards to the U.S. spending, not the president. What's your reaction? Well, I think that that may well be true. The Congress has the final say, but I don't know that Congress has in any way overridden the president. And right. the president has the ability, I think, to, to not pay them. I also think, frankly, there are other sanctions they could take. Uh, the fact is, sanctuary cities are dangerous for America. Uh, virtually 84% of the American people agree that sanctuary cities increase the risk of crime. Now, why the liberal Democrats want to wage a campaign this fall in which they are the open borders party against ICE enforcing the law in favor of sanctuary cities. I mean, this, uh, people are going to be shocked in Washington with the election results if this ends up being the choice in October. Yeah, we just had one Democratic operative on, Antoine, who said, look, it's, it's false to say that the Democrats want open borders. But when you consider the fact that, you know, they're, <laughs> they want all these sanctuary cities, how, how do you look at it any other way?